How are you folks? Welcome back. Did you miss me? Well, I miss you. Been feeling a little bit better. Got a couple more doctor's appointments to see if I can get even better than I was. This COVID thing's turned into be a little bit longer term than they said. Anyway, we're carrying on. Working on the bridge port. And as you've seen from some of the other videos, it's kind of a process. I've got to make some tools so I can measure what I'm doing. And one of those tools is the Kingway alignment uh, device. That way I can measure the Bridgeport table as I scrape it to make sure it's perfectly coplanar. And anyway, that's what we're doing and we're carrying on with that. As I said a couple years ago, Richard gave me some of these, uh, I don't know what you'd call them. But basically, you bore this out and a rod goes this way and then a rod goes through the other one. And then we'll take and split them and uh, drill some holes there and put some knobs to lock them down. That way you can adjust the rods and lock it. Well, this is the casting. I mean, it's pretty nice casting. You've got Kingway written on it. One of the other videos I showed you how I was going to hold it in this uh, machine, Bob, and start boring on them. Well, turned out I had to go get some more equipment, like some different size reamers that I needed. And they weren't all to just ream that 5 8 hole. I did get a new one of those. but. Bob has a tool carousel, and you turn this carousel around, and you have eight tools on it that you can use to do what you want to. Frankly, all my life I've wanted one of these because I get tired of changing tools in and out. Only have to set them up one time on Bob, but Bob's a little different than most lathes. Bob doesn't have a tailstock, <clears throat> and one of the advantages of a tailstock on a lathe is it gives you a fixed reference point for the center of your drive spindle. If you put a user, and Bob has a cross slide that changes where the center of this tool holder will be, and I can slide it up and down. So to get by the limitation, what you have to do on Bob is back over here is a stop that I can set so that when I run this cross slide back across, <clears throat> I can go to that stop. And if I've set these correctly on the carousel, I know I'm in center just on a, like a regular lathe. And I need that to drill a hole. So what I need to do now is set up all of these different tool holders with the bits, the reamers, the cutoff tool, anything else I need to do to I don't know why I'm doing that. I'll just reach over here and get another one. I hope you can hear me okay. I went back to the Rode wireless mic so that no matter which way I'm turning, you can hear me because with the directional mics and the camera mic, sometimes when I'm turning like this, you can't hear me. So we'll try it. This is a tool holder that fits onto the carousel. And I've got different size holes in this. Problem is, these different size tools you buy don't always have the same size shank fit into here. If you notice, this is too loose. So the very first thing I need to do is make a bushing for this that's three quarters on the outside and then five uh, eights on the inside. It's pretty thin. So I need that to be able to set this on center. 
I've also got a few other things I need to do, and I'll show you how I do it as we go on. Anyway, that's what we're going to do. I don't know if you can see it. Let's see if we can tighten up. You might notice in here I've got this held in a three-jaw chuck. And I took a, a bit and I flattened off this face and it's ready to be drilled, but I've got to set up the drills and the reamers on center. So what I'm going to be doing is taking that piece out. and inserting some alignment tools that I'm going to make up so that I can line these holders. Now this is a piece of drill rod and I just took it out on the saw and cut it off so it'd be a short enough length and what I'm going to do is put it in here and face off this end and then leave it in here to be able to set up the tool holder on center. Let me get you another camera going so you can see what I'm doing close up. How's that? We got a little GoPro to stick on the carousel. Now all we need to do is make it work. Don't tell me. I just put a new battery in it. While I'm changing the battery, I want to say thank you to all the people that are new. All the people that stick around and put up with me. Oh. It's kind of been nice that while I've been kind of gone for a while, the channel's still growing. People are enjoying it. Thank you. Makes an old fart like me happy. Speaking of old farts, Don says hi. We've been kind of keeping apart from each other because I don't want to get him sick. Seat of honor right there. How's that? Okay. Pull the start. And let's go into some speed. Some second gear. What I'm doing is putting a little bit of a, a chamfer on the end of this. So that as it goes into the tool holder hole, I can make sure it gets in there perfectly. This will go back and do anything. This is a hold on you guys. I'm gonna go for a ride. Lock you in. And as you can see here, we've got a chamfer on this and we've got this. So what I need to do is move over here and move the carriage or excuse me, the cross light up against that stop. It's stopped. 
So now as I advance towards here, I need to make sure that this is dead center on there. And this just attaches here. There's a little stop right here that goes up against this lip. Keep it parallel. Need to get the set screws out of the way. And now that's pretty tight on there. Now this is a piece of drill rod. And it's usually pretty good tolerance. Now I take that back. That's not a piece of drill rod. That's a piece, piece of stainless steel rod I had. And so that's not going to be perfect to this size. It's in there a little bit, but it's pretty tight. So what I need to do is go ahead and chase that dimension down where it fits here perfect. Luckily, I'm sitting on a, a very nice lathe that can do stuff like that, huh? We'll come back off the stop. And as you can tell, there's some marks on there. It gives me a pretty good indication of what I need to uh, cut off of there to get down to the right dimension. So I'm going to put you back up here. And we'll go from there. You see? All right. Going to start right here and just go till I touch off. And right there. We'll need a lot. Now I'm going to use these controls down here on Bob for the travel, the carriage feed. I'm going to go left. And it's going at about 35 right now. This is the clutch for it. This is the clutch for it. Usually I use drill rod, but lately I haven't had a lot of luck getting the sizes I needed out here in the middle of nowhere. Okay, I'm going to put it in reverse, go to the right, put the clutch, and feed it off of there. Because we're looking to get a real good, good fit. I can tell that this piece of stainless steel is kind of out of round. Okay, I'm going to go forward a little bit, switch back in. It's going to take too much off. Come back in here and just touch off again. Now the 
reason I just stopped and went back and touched up again Using a machine like this, and you're trying to be very precise. These things get worn. Any machine does. I mean, my gosh, all my life I've wanted a lady who could just reach up there and turn 2000s and cut 2000s, no matter which way. But it didn't work like that. So, what I did was I saw it was taking too deep of a cut there, so I stopped and I backed off hard enough out that where I can start going back in, I took any of the slot out of the leaf screw, out of it. So if you're trying to cut into your material, always take your adjustments going forward. Okay? That's what I had to do. So now I've touched off again, and we're going to see how much I'm taking off. I'm only trying to take off maybe a thousand. And I've taken off a little bit where it was uh, out of round. I could tell it was cutting on one side of that stainless. <laughs> and that's taken off maybe a three or four tenths. And that's okay. We're sneaking up on it. gets up here, I'm going to switch to reverse. This tool holder is a is a go no go gauge. Still no go. Now I haven't touched this wheel and it's engaged going forward. So I'm going to hit right here and take off a thousandth and a half. Let's see what it does. Go in. What I'm doing is I'm making an alignment tool so that the center of this spindle is going to be kind of not even talking right here. What I'm doing here is I'm making an alignment tool for that tool holder. I've chucked up a piece of material, turned the outer diameter to where it's in line with the rotation or the, 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 the center of the spindle. The problem is to use this again on another setup. I've only made half the tool. Now, this 
is a piece of drill rod that's pretty dead gum precise. Uh, when I put this in a collet or chuck, I know it's pretty much going to be perfect. Thus, I can just do this end down here to get a little chamfer on it so it'll fit in things easy. And I'll know I have a perfectly lined cylinder in my chuck or collet. Because I used a small piece of stainless steel that wasn't ground and it's really good outer surface finish. I've now made one half of the tool. To be able to use it and put it back in the chuck again to do something, it won't ever line up the same. So what I need to do is turn that around and then do the other side. That way I'd have somewhat a cylinder. It doesn't matter if it's the same exact dimension, just as long as it's in line with the other side. It's always something. Let's see if this will fit. Now the reason I just stopped and went back and touched off again <clears throat> when you're using a machine like this and you're trying to be very precise these things get worn. Any machine does. I mean, my gosh, all my life I've wanted a lathe you could just reach up there and turn two thousandths and cut two thousandths no matter which way. But it didn't work like that. So what I did was I saw I was taking too deep of a cut there. So I stopped and I backed off far enough out that where I could start going back in, I took any of the slop out of the lead screw, out of it. So if you're trying to cut into your material, always take your adjustments going forward. Okay? That's what I had to do. So now I've touched off again and we're going to see how much I'm taking off. I'm only trying to take off maybe a thousandth. And I've taken off a little bit where it was uh, out around. I could tell it was cutting on one side of that stainless. And that's taken off maybe a three or four tenths. And that's okay. We're sneaking up on it. It gets up here. I'm going to switch to reverse. use this tool holder as a as a go no go gauge still no go now I haven't touched this wheel and it is engaged going forward so I'm going to hit right here and take off a thousandth and a half. Let's see what it does. Go in.
Come back out. And remember when you're doing something that's sticking out that far from your chuck, it's only half inch thick. When it touches the tip of your cutter, it's going to push away from it. By doing some spring passes, instead of sitting here and automatically dialing another thousandth in, you eliminate that springiness of the material to some degree. I mean, so right now, I don't see hardly any material coming off of it, so I know we got rid of the spring. Look at that. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So now I've got a tool that I can line this up with to the center. I need to go back to the end of my stop. Rotate around to where I want to put it. And I really don't know right this second. I'm just going to come over here. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this chuck holder out. The reason is I'm trying to be pretty dead gum accurate here. Well, let me just show you. I could have used a chuck holder. But one of the limitations of Bob is it doesn't have that big of a travel in and out. That's it. So if I were to go and put this reamer in Bob, A, I have no room to work. B, I've got a tool that's sticking way out in space and can wobble around. So what I'm doing is I don't want to use a chuck. I want to get tight as I can on this tool holder. And when I finish with this one, I'll be able to move this tool holder into the carousel. So it's not sticking out and being a wimp noodle. And the carousel doesn't need this uh, chuck on it right now. So that would free up one of the spaces by taking it out. I said it would free up one of the spaces by taking it out. Obviously it doesn't want to come out. Well, that's okay. I'll take you off like this. I have others. And I do use it, so there's no use of me spending a lot of time futzing around messing with it. So we'll just put that in the drawer and go from there. Let's see what we need. We'll stick you in for right this minute. I've been looking for tools for Bob, doing searches and things, and sometimes that's not so easy on these. All right, so now we've got something we can put in there if we need to. And I have this one here. You weren't even looking. Come on.
this the right way. All right. So now we're all the way up against my holder. Come in here. Slide this to where it fits on that shaft like that. See how nice that is? Then I can tighten it down. And I know now that the center of this tool holder is on the center of the spindle axis. Them up and there we go just slides nice okay one down now what am I going to put in that I don't know how about this drill bit now this drill bits what I need to ream for a 9 16 hole to make that little part I need. So I'm going to put this drill bit in. And that's set up on center when I'm at that stop. Now I've switched to a piece of uh, I believe 3 quarter inch drill rod. And I'm going to make another tool so I can line up the three quarter inch um, tool holders. forget to lock that carousel. Now we'll go ahead and face it off. Okay, so now I got a tool set up on center, ready to do any other holder I need. And there we go. And here's a holder that I need to change. This is a pretty big centering bit.
we need to make sure it's on center too. So carriage back to the stop. On out here and it's not where it needs to be. So if I just put that on there without checking it, I would have had a big mess. Well my hole wouldn't have been right. got a way to put a center in it. Stick it out a little farther. Now I've got two tools lined up. If I want to, I can drill a hole in that center real quick. And basically, probably what I need to do. One's there. As I said, I don't have a, a way to hold this where I can slide it in a lot. So I'm going to make a bushing for this one. Now this piece here, while we're at it, we can set it up and get it centered. Still on my stop back there. loose now I don't like this kind of holder as much because it can be adjusted I mean you can do a lot of fine adjustment but I really don't need a lot of fine adjustment on that one. What I need is a holder like this that just goes right into it. So what I'm going to do is take this off. But because I already have this tool holder here set up, I can't just slide it out. I'll have to take off these nuts and pick it up. Just no problem. Because we want to use this one, we'll just pull these nuts off and the studs out of it. And I'll actually put them on this holder that I need. So that saves me a little bit of time. I'm not sure what they call that other style. I just know. It's a C4, and it's, and it's bored all the way through. But this outer plate out here allows you to move it for a little bit more precision. See how offset that one is right now? And I knew that because when I went through that hole, it didn't go through the other part. So you're set up for that. Put you on here. I know this is a lot of problem, trouble going to this to make all this and get it set up. 
But once I got it set up, I can do all these bores without having to do much more than pull a handle. I like that. Change enough tools in my life to have my fill of it. One time I bought a rotary tool holder for a tail stock. And I found if you were doing anything exact, it had so much play in it that it just was worthless. Now we're set up on this one. So we have one, two, three tool holder set. This one will be for the uh, can't talk and think at the same time. This is a piece I'm going to make the sleeve out of. So I'm through with this tool. And I'm going to go ahead and put it right in the toolbox along with this other one and keep these. I'm probably going to mark them. I think Hardigen made a tool for that. I haven't ever seen it available to buy. Dang pants are falling down. Twin being sick with C19 and all the complications that caused, the medicine my doctor put me on to keep me from, to level out my blood sugar, that new Manjaro. The side benefit of that is that you lose weight and it makes your blood pressure go down, your blood sugar equal out, your body uses insulin better. But so far I've lost 28 pounds. My wife had to buy me a new belt. All right. This is a bad habit. Don't do like I do sometimes. Leave your dadgum chuck wrench in. Especially if you move away from your, your tool. Somebody comes on, turns it on, or you do it by accident and it flies everywhere. I guess I'm getting old and forgetful. Now, as I said, this is a piece of drill rod. The outer dimension is what I need for the, the, the collet. Now I need to be able to, uh, oh crap. I'm gonna make this. Oh, I remember. Or do I? Yeah. I need this reamer for making the hole for this sleeve. Well, as you can see, I might need my other piece back out here. No. That piece ain't going to work. It's too big. So I need another tool. Or I could set this up using this reamer. And the reason I can do this is this reamer is really long. And what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to take that part out because we've got to set this up first. But because I'm using a chuck like this, I can actually put this reamer in backwards and get it back in there far enough to where I'm clearing the flutes of the reamer. Well, I say I am. There I go. And I leave enough sticking out that I can use it as a gauge until I make one for it. So there we go. And I guess we're going to put you 
over in this open slot right here. Pardon my knuckles. We're going to go back to make sure we're on our stop. We are. We're getting so tight in there, you guys can't see anything but my hand. Tomorrow is Sunday, I'm going to be putting in I heard my wife going, yoo -hoo. she probably wants to go eat. All right. Now we have a spot for our reamer. Slide this out. All right. Now, put this slug of material I'm going to make the sleeve out of. Are you up there trying to terrorize the poor cat? I haven't been out of this room. I've been working really hard. Huh? That's the motor for this. You're trying to terrorize that poor cat. She's up there. What the fuck? What? No, no, folks. My wife did not curse. Oh, sorry. <laughs> A dollar in the swear jar. Um, you got ready. Yeah. Let the cat have some eating time. She's up there. Let me just face this off real quick. Okay, I'm giving Rosie some time to also. Go back off. off. Then we'll drill a center drill. And we'll go from there. Back to our stop. Thank you. 
now that's an inch and a half so I'm going to drill to about that depth right there trim tap heavy that I use for everything. my brush off. See, once I got all the tools set up, it was just one, two, three. Um, now, if I had to make a hundred thousand of them, I could just one, two, three. But it's still nice. using this as a depth gauge I know we need about that much so I'm going to start it right there and rotate it around where I just happen to have a parting cutoff tool lined up. See, to use that, I had to move the carriage, but because I got that stop, I'm okay. Let's go right there.
because it's so thin, all the heat's gone out of it. Nice little sleeve that I hope will allow me to put that chucking reamer into this tool holder. Got a little bit of a, a lip in here where I pushed on to it. But if you have one of these little do do jig do gadget jiggers, you just sit there and run it around like that. And that puts a nice little inside chamfer, uh, chamfer on it. So now, and more importantly, there. So now I've made a sleeve to fit this tool holder and I can mount this. For that reamer. And luckily, the drill I need for this reamer fits in this tool holder. So all I got to do is just take it out when I need to do that. And this is the reamer. <clears throat> I guess I could do it now, huh? In fact, I could even pull that reamer out. And what I do with all these things, I learned a long time ago I lose stuff that are specific to an operation unless I keep them together. This drill bit goes in there, that goes in there. This goes on here. This goes on here. And so now I've got a label 916 streamer and the drill, which is a 32 something. Oh, 3564. I'm going to do the same thing for my other one. So now, we put that in, tighten it up. And we are ready to indicate this back into the three jaw chuck and bore through it the correct diameter and ream it out. This may or may not be the end of this video, depending on how long it's got. But we'll be back one way or the other.